Hi, good afternoon and welcome. This is CIS 105 Visual Basic Project at Chandler Gilbert Community College in Chandler, Arizona. And what we're going to do is we're going to go over Visual Basic for applications for the CIS 105 class. And we're going to be doing this project together. So you're going to go ahead and open up Excel because the Visual Basic application is a subset of Visual Basic and it uses a common language for customizing Microsoft applications, but it's run through Microsoft Excel. So we're going to go ahead and open it up. It's Visual Basic is especially useful for prototyping and developing interfaces to other applications such as databases or in this case Microsoft Excel. Uh, our three objectives today is we're going to access and set up the VBA interface, design the screen output and setting object properties, and then writing and testing the program code. So first let's do accessing and setting up the VBA interface. So we're going to open up Microsoft Excel. And if the Developer tab is not displayed, we're going to go to File, Options, Customize Ribbon, and then you're going to make sure that you have the Developer tab checked off so that it displays. In my case, it displays. So we're going to go ahead and go over to the Developer tab. And there's two ways to open up the Visual Basic Applications program through Excel. You can click on the icon up here in the corner. And we had practice uh, with this area when we recorded a macro, or you can hit Alt-11. In my case, I'm going to click on the application. And this is the Visual Basic for Applications window. You'll notice that nothing is displayed yet. And we're going to go ahead and arrange the interface. So we're going to point to the tools first and click Options. And we're going to make sure that all of the docking checkboxes are unchecked because we want to be able to move stuff around. And if you've had it docked, it means it's going to attach somewhere on the window. In my case, they're all unchecked. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And then next, I'm going to open up my first tool. I'm going to go to the View menu and open up the Project Explorer. And you'll notice that there's nothing displayed except for the Microsoft Excel objects. Sheets 1, 2, and 3, which are blank, and the entire worksheet. And we're going to drag this to the lower right-hand corner um, of the screen. I'm going to go ahead and go down all the way to the bottom. And then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to open up the Properties window. And I'm going to move that up a little bit higher. And then you're going to click and insert your first user form. So you're going to go to insert and user form. And you notice it came in and kind of overlaid a little bit. So I'm going to make it a little bit shorter. And I'm going to grab the toolbox and move it out of the form. And then I'm just going to kind of arrange my window. I'm going to move this up. I'm going to use the sizing handles to make it a little bit bigger. You see the scroll cars are popping in and out as I'm doing that. And then I'm going to grab the side and kind of pull it over a little bit and kind of center it in here. So you're going to resize them if necessary to make them look like the directions. You can have it look like this. You can move your toolbox around so that it's up over here. Um, however, you want to do it so that you can see the controls, the property sheet, and the Project Explorer window. So after we've arranged the basic toolbars and windows, we're going to close anything else that's open. In our case, nothing is. And if you should accidentally close something, I'm going to go ahead and close the user form. You'll see that the property sheet went away. But here's my user form down here in the project window. So if I double click it, everything comes back. So if necessary, you're going to go ahead and drag this around or anything else. And we're going to make sure that only the standard toolbar is displayed. So I'm going to right click next to the help and make sure that standard is displayed. If user form were displayed, you see how it's down here? And I only want standard. So next, we're going to arrange the interface by adding labels. And to do that, we're going to go over to the controls in the toolbox and click on our first label. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to go about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven over and about four lines 
down to create my first label. And then I'm going to do the same thing. Two, three, four for label two. Four. And all the way through label four. And I'm kind of skipping in between here and creating some space. And even after you draw them, you can make, you can adjust the sizing on the labels. But we want them all roughly about the same size. I'll pull this in just a tiny little bit. And so we have our labels all the same size. And those are labels one through four. Now we're going to insert a text box into the form. And we're going to make it roughly the same size as the label. And so it appears about the same. And that's our textbook. And this time we're going to draw three more labels. So I'm going to double click. So when I draw my label, the A stays. And I'm going to go ahead and continue to make labels five, six, and seven. You want them roughly the same size. So you'll see to uncheck it, you can either click the select objects or you could have clicked off on the label. And I'm just going to tighten this up just a tiny bit so that they're roughly the same size. You see my text box needs to be just a little bit wider so that they're all kind of even. So now that we've added our seven labels and our text box, we're going to need two command buttons. So let's add those. And we're going to, again, roughly about the same size. So over about seven and down about four. And we're going to put them in between the two uh, the two rows. So right about there for the first one. And then right about here for the second one. And so we have our two commands. So we've added our labels, we've added our text box, and we've added our two command buttons. So I'm going to go ahead and pause at this juncture. And that way I can answer any questions you have before we continue with setting the object properties.